All right, Scott, continuing with ClipFlow today, we're gonna have a look at setting up a component that conditionally renders things in stream mode. So some things we wanna hide and hide or show depending on if stream mode's turned on or off. And then we're also gonna try and add some stimulus to the button so that we can actually toggle stream out on and off. So let's jump in. All right, so we're here at the moment, We've got our little main content component rendering, and then we've got our heading component rendering. But now we wanna have a component that's to render, that determines whether or not we render something in stream mode. So I think with that, we can call this component stream mode conditional, something like that. Let me, give me a second to think about a good name for that one. So I think we can run with something like conditional content component. Right, so we're gonna call it conditional content component. So I'm, I might even go stream conditional content. Let's go with conditional content. The reason why I'm hesitating here is I'm just thinking like, is it too broad if we ever wanna have, you know, show something, but let's just go with conditional content for now. We can always, re we can always rename a component. So let's go conditional content. Now, the cool thing that I noticed inside of these components is they have a little me method called render. Render. Right, and we can just say here, false. Now if we just chuck this component, so we've got this conditional, it's got the template. Now if we just chuck that in here, let's just, get, we're gonna render a new component. I'm just gonna quickly grab this, new, and this is called conditional component. All right, now there's nothing there. And that's fine, we expect that. If we say true, let's just see. There we go, right? So you can control it here. So we're gonna be able to do that using this thing here. Now the only thing that I'm thinking about is we probably actually won't use this method because this will this method will um, be server rendered. So that you can run these things on if you you know have a certain piece of data, it's like a certain user type or something like that. We can choose whether to show that or not. But in our instance, we're gonna have this controlled by JavaScript. So we're always gonna render this component actually, right? So that'll always show up. The actual CSS will determine whether or not we actually render this component, right? So for instance, we're gonna look for something like this. We're gonna wrap it in a block like this. So all it is, is this, and then we're gonna render the content here. So this will always be a do block, yeah. And then we're gonna go div. And all we care about is this. So we're gonna show the block if it's turned on. So I, I definitely think we should rename this to something to do with streaming. And then we're gonna show it. If, we, if we're not streaming, we show it, otherwise we hide it. Okay, so now to actually implement that, let's, let's wrap this heading component in it. So we're gonna say do, bump that in, and then here we're gonna say end. All right. Okay, so currently it's showing. If we turn this to true, it disappears. Okay, you see that? So now we have this conditional component and the only reason we turn in a component is just so we don't have to constantly rewrite this logic. So we can then wrap anything that we wanna disappear in stream mode, we can just wrap it in this conditional, all right? I'm gonna rename that and it might even be like, hide when streaming. I might even make it really explicit. I'm gonna say hide when streaming component. It's just the name, it's, a, it's, it's just very clear and I think clarity is important. So we'll, we'll rename this component to hide when streaming component, new. And then whenever we wrap something like this, anything that's, when we go streaming, this will get hidden. All right, and that's very clear. And then it's, we, can, we can like have show when streaming component. All right, so let's try that. All right, so I think I've come up with the, Good enough name. Streaming visibility control component. So we always have to put the word component, but if you saw this as like a React component, it'd be called streaming visibility control, right? And then what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna chuck that there and then just rename all these things. So, whoops, that 
I didn't do anything there, so that's good. All right, so then we just got to change this name. You know what? Let's just let's just rerun this. It's easier. Let's generate new component streaming visibility control. That makes more sense. All right, let's get rid of conditional content component. Don't need you. I think that's too generic. Um, this one. So let's just get rid of that one. Streaming visibility control. All right. Uh, I shouldn't have deleted that. Anyway, here we go. We'll get this back. Chuck that in there. All right. Make, render out the content. To be honest, I am liking how this feels. It feels nice. So let's get rid of the main content. And then this is going to be streaming visibility content. There we go. Let's run that. Hide when streaming component. Oh, yep. That's what that is. All right. Are we streaming? Yes, we are. Let's show this. All right. So we've got that now. So it'll show and hide. But that's we want to... We want to use this component for different things. So we want to use it for showing things when streaming or hiding things when streaming. So this is the this um, that we need to look at here. So let's try going back into ex experimental land again. Let's go style. And then we're going to say, I think I'm going to go streaming visibility control value, right? And then I'm going to say false. All right, so nothing's changed there. And then let's see if I can inject this here. No, nah. so I wonder if we can use how we can do this. So somehow I have to use this data. I wonder if we can use this value here, there somehow. I'll give that a go. Okay, so it looks like you can't do what I'm trying to do there, but I have found a solution. So now what I've done is I've added a variable to the component, which we probably needed anyway. So when we have the stream mode visibility, I've also renamed it to stream mode visibility control to be even more clear. Now, when we initialize, we cr we'll create this um, property show when streaming false, show when streaming true. So we want this, when we're streaming, this needs to be hidden. And when we're streaming, this needs to show, all right? So this is how we can render conditional content. So, and then what I've done is inside of the uh, component, we're just initializing with the variable and then inside of the view, we're using that variable and we're either returning the full string stream mode true or stream mode false, okay? So hopefully Tailwind can pick that up and actually see it and it looks like it does. So now when we say, so we're stream mode true now, so you can see we're streaming. And then when we change this to false, we get back to our header. So what we're gonna do here is for us, we're gonna use this property to control a few things. Firstly, we're gonna hide titles because we don't really need to show the title of the section that you're in. We're gonna use it to uh, control this little button here, right? So when we're streaming, we're gonna do that pulsing and the icon. Um, and then we're also going to remove this um, top padding, all right? So that's for the stream mode visibility control. All right, so that's, that's the first piece of the puzzle and that seems to be working now. So now when we go like this and now, so we're not streaming right now and we just change to stream mode true, we now lose that and we're gonna have extra space now because that whole head is gonna collapse, all right? Okay, so the next piece is I wanna jump into this main content component and I actually wanna remove um, this padding, all right? So when we, have when we're in stream mode we want to reduce the padding okay so what we're going to do is so we've got this pt16 but then what we're going to say let's just i just need to clean this up so we don't care about that we can get rid of this so when stream mode is true right so we get rid of these quotes so when stream mode is true for the app group we want to make pt just four okay so now let, the easiest way we're going to have to do this now is we're going to just back in our kanban board here let's just leave this render in for now show in streaming true 
and we're going to just change this to streaming. Okay. So we're currently streaming. So you can see that there's not much padding at the top there. When we flip the switch again, we now have more padding. Okay. So we're doing that to just save on vertical height. It was one of the um, issues that we saw in the video that Theo made about Notion is that you're just losing vertical height. And obviously that really only matters when you're streaming. When you're using it day to day, you're not using it at 720p, but when you're streaming, you're in 720p. So now in that, we're gonna try and save and preserve as much vertical space, all right? So that's one of the things we're gonna do there. So we just chuck that on, boom, all right? So that's that part. So the next part that I wanna work on, I wanna try work on, I'm gonna pull this into a component, this little button here. Um, so that we can add some JS or some using stimulus to actually toggle the stream mode on and off because then we can have this all dynamic, feeling fresh. Okay, so to get started, let's create a new component. Let's clear the screen here. So we're gonna Rails G component and we're gonna say, this is gonna be the stream mode toggle, stream mode toggle button or toggle. Let's just call it stream mode toggle, right? So run that. All right, so now we are gonna have, let's close all these guys here. Here's our stream mode toggle, okay? So from our navigation bar, this is what the stream mode toggle looks like, right? So we're gonna grab that, and then we're gonna put that into stream mode toggle component. I'm gonna drop that in there, okay? Now, that's that, and now if we chuck, can close this one off, chuck this here. So what we're gonna do here is, I'm just gonna render it again, just so that we don't lose all our work. So we're gonna go render, and this is gonna be stream mode toggle component dot new. And that's pretty much all we need. So now we've got two stream modes, that's awesome. So I can get rid of this one. All right, so now we're rendering our little toggle component, bang. So you can see that this feels very much like, if you've come from a React background, this feels very similar. You've been rendering out components. And this is what I think made React strong, was the ability to comp like turn things into little components and we can reuse them and we can compartmentalize all their logic. So if you ever wanted to change this one thing, you can easily. Rails can do it with partials, yes. But I like, I think we'll see now is we can nest or have our, our stimulus controller and JavaScript sitting right next to our component which makes it for me just much easier to localize everything that, together. All right, so the first thing to add JavaScript to our view component is we need to update the stimulus controller locations. So if we go into app JavaScript, where is it? App JavaScript controllers index. So we've got application and index. All right, so let's just check what's happening in application. That's got this, and that's just sitting that. And then the index is actually where we um, grab all our stuff. Okay, so what we're gonna do, um, require context. I feel like this doc is probably a little bit outdated. So I might just have a look at something else because it feels like if you have a look at this file, it's a little bit different. All right, so let's just, I'll find the updated one. All right, so after a bit of digging, um, I found this, thread here, how to configure stimulus using new Rails 7 asset pipeline. So this Lord here, Chun Li, added a little rake task. But what we can do here is use, I copied it down the bottom here, because this one includes CSS files, so just future proofing. But what we, I did is I just threw that file inside of tasks and view component.rake, all right? And then from there you can see Whenever stimulus updates run, it'll run this view component stimulus manifest update. And what that does is it, it runs through our components directory and creates, it runs and creates, finds all the stimulus controllers and then includes them here. And then what we're doing inside of JavaScript is we are adding in this components import here. So it's now importing all the components from our components Java, so all the JavaScript from our components file, I should say. And now when we run this guy, we're getting a hello from stimulus. So if I just go back into the stream mode toggle component, I can say hello from stream mode. 
just to make sure we're not lying or fibbing. There you go, hello from stream mode component, all right? So we can see, so we're now registered. Um, and that's a little bit of a workaround because I think we're trying to make two things, smash two things together. What I do want to see though, is if we create a new component, I want to see if it actually runs for us. I'm just going to write steam. Let's go, let's go test here. I wonder if we have to run that manually every time because I don't think, yes, yeah, so it's not running. So we have to remember to run this guy and then it'll append it here, right? So if I just get rid of this test component now and this one and then run this again. So I just need to find a way to hook this in to the default way. So I think there's something we have to sh stick it into a specific location. So I think we might have to stick, because see over this bit here, I feel like that needs to override. So when we run this, it needs to automatically run that one. But we do have it working now. All right, so we've got our little uh, component controller now registered. Um, and then inside of our, uh, let's actually have a look in here, inside of our HTML, we've got our data controller, yeah? And now when we run this page, we can see that we've got the stream mode component. All right, so now what we wanna do is on here, we wanna have an action to toggle. Um, so let's close this off. We wanna close this off. We wanna go into our actual JS here. And when we click on that button, so I can have these two files open next to each other. When we click on this button, we want to trigger and actually change something. So what we want to do, let's the first thing we want to do is capture the click. All right, so to do that, what we're going to do here is we're going to say data action. All right, so it's saying on click, we're going to stream mode toggle component, right? stream mode toggle component. So that's the reason we're getting a double up there is because it's nested inside of a folder. So that's okay. And then here we're going to say toggle. All right. So it's looking for the toggle method. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a toggle method, right? We're going to pass an E, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to just go console.log and we're going to say toggle and we're going to pass an E just to make sure we're getting it right. Let's close that off. All right, let's see if that works. There we go. So we've got the toggle now. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go e.preventDefault because we don't actually want anything to happen there with that. That's not a link. So we might even change that into a button, to be honest. So let's go here and change this to a button. All right, so it still looks the same. And we're still getting that there. All right, cool. So the next thing that we want to do is here, we want to grab... So we want to find the element. So we want to find the value inside of our layout. So we want to find this value, right? So we want to look for that and then we want to grab that value and just see what it is right now. We're getting real deep into plain JavaScript. So this is where the fundamentals are important. So we're going to actually have to go and look at using the finding the, of the nodes. Um, to actually grab the find DOM node, let's go. Okay, so I'm playing around in console. It's a quick way to find it. So what we're going to do here is document dot query selector all, and then we're going to look for all the body tag basically with the attribute of data stream mode equals true. Right. So we're going to find that. So we're going to get that there, and that's going to give us a node list, right? So that's giving us the whole body node there. What we actually want to do, let's see if we can find just data stream mode, yeah? So this is all the nodes that have data stream mode. This might be better. And let's see if we can even make it without body. Let's just go just straight. Any node that's got data stream mode set, we're going to grab that, all right? So these are going to be our nodes, yeah? So we're going to grab them in here. We're going to go const nodes equals this, yeah? So const nodes equals document or query select all data stream mode, right? And then we're going to go nodes dot for each here, and then we're just going to go console.log node. 
All right, I'm just gonna clean this up. So we're gonna step through here so we can work through and find the nodes that we're gonna change out that value. All right, so let's refresh and we're gonna click. Now we've got one node here. So this is our body node. So the cool thing is in the inspector, you can, as you hover it, show, it highlights what that node is. And you can see here we've got data stream mode true. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna find out what, find what that value is first, and then we're gonna to toggle it to the opposite. Refresh the thing, click on here. Now we've got this node. Right click on this node, store as global variable, and then we go temp1.dataset. Now you can see we've got a DOM string map here and you can see stream mode is true. So if we go temp1.dataset.stream mode, we can see that it's true, right? So what we're gonna say is, we're gonna go, I guess, I mean, to, to be fair, let's make this simpler and just make it that we only have one, we only have one node controlling this because otherwise we're gonna get a little bit messy. So what I'm gonna say is document query selector. So there we've got a node list. If we just use query selector, we only get one value back, all right? So this is gonna be the, the, um, the, bod, the body node. So I'm gonna call it body node or even just root node because I think that's how Tailwind refers to it. So we're gonna just grab that and then we're gonna say body, right? That's our root node. We don't need a loop now. So now we're gonna say const current um, value, I mean current stream mode value, uh, current stream mode is equal to root.dataset.stream mode, okay? And then we're gonna say, I mean, that's pretty straightforward there, new stream mode equals current stream mode. So what we can actually do, we're gonna update the data set and flip out that value. So because this thing, we can actually mutate this value. So what we're gonna say now is root node dot data set dot, oh, that was it, there we go. So we're gonna say update stream mode value. All right, so if current stream mode, so we can basically just say this, we can get rid of this. Um, and it's not root node, it's root node. First, we're gonna find the root node. So it's find root node keep writing note find root node and then we're going to update so we're going to if the current one is true we're going to change it to false otherwise we're going to set it to true yeah and that's all we're doing that that's all we need to do so let's give that a spin and see what that does so I've refreshed here and now if i click this you can see there we're now enabling and if we open up the elements and here's this is the one we want to watch can you see how that changes from false to true? So now we're controlling, we're flipping that out and we're all doing that on the data um, attribute there. Now what we're gonna do as well is when that flicks, we wanna change this guy out. So this is the toggle component now. And what we're gonna do is depending on what the parent's value is, we will change these guys and flip them out. So inside of the main content, Remember we use this guy, all right? So what we're now gonna do is, we're gonna grab the same thing and we're gonna say, if group data stream mode is true, then animate pulse. Okay, so we've just changed what's happening there. And now let's refresh this. See now when we click, this is not stream mode, stream mode on. So now it's pulsing and now it's off, okay? What I'm gonna do though, just also, just to make this a bit more logical, is stream mode starts off as false, okay? Not true, you're gonna start this app without being in stream mode. Then you're gonna click stream mode, and that's gonna happen. What I also wanna do is inside this Kanban view, projects Kanban view, show in streaming true. Just need to fix this and figure out why that's not loading anymore because that is meant to show the streaming button and it was working but anyway we will get back to that i'm not sure why that's not working now so ignoring that piece if we go now so the other thing we want to do we don't need an href on this button uh we don't need an enabled here so where 
I don't think we even use this at all. So if we just get rid of that, yep, that still works. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to change this text out. So what we can do here is give this an ID and this is going to be called tooltip. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. We're just going to call it tooltip. Um, can we get itself? Yeah, we will when we, no, that's not it. I'm just trying to figure out what, how we can get to this tooltip. Stream mode toggle component tooltip. Might just call it that, right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just flip out the text as well. <clears throat> and then what we can do here, the same thing, we're gonna go stream mode toggle component icon. Okay, I'm just doing this to make it easy to find these guys. We could do it with CSS and then can have two things and, and flip them out. But I think it's just easier just to do it this way. So let's grab in here. So we got the stream mode value and then we're gonna say update icons, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say const icon node. The only problem with this, actually this should be fine. So if we just go here, let's, let's start with the icon, all right? So we're gonna query by using a ID like that. So, and we only wanna find one. So let's do this and just run it in console. So it's finding nothing. Okay, let's just save here and save here. Let's see, there we go. So it's returning that. And then we can actually go dot class list, right? You can see that it's given two items there. We're going to change our FA circle and we're going to change it to FA square, I believe. So to do this, what we're going to say, it's not, it's icon node here. We're going to say icon node, right? So we're going to remove, okay, so we're going to remove, this is going to be a ternary. So if we are live, so we probably need to find, yeah, we probably need to pull this out. So we're going to say, const is stream, I mean, stream mode is equal to that, right? And then we're gonna just flip that out. And then we're gonna say, if it's stream mode is on, we're gonna remove this one. So let's just grab it, so it's FA circle. So if, if we're streaming, then we want to have, we're going to remove FA circle and we're going to replace it with FA square. And then the same, the opposite here. So we're going to add, if it's stream mode, we're going to add and we're going to remove. Okay, let's see if that works. So we're going to hit start streaming. No, we haven't done it. So let me just see if this works, what's going on here. It could be because this is getting updated. So what we can do here is let's just go here, console.log is stream mode. All right, false. So we should be removing this, we should be adding this. So it's the wrong, I think it's the wrong way around. Oh, that, that's what it is in the beginning. So it's the opposite of that. So let's just grab this back. Because yeah, it, it is false when we, before we click it and then after we click it's true. So we want to perform this after. So now what we can say is, we'll say here, const is stream mode. So now we'll check it once we've done the, um, the toggle, then we will do it. All right, this should work, hopefully. There we go. So now we're streaming and pulsing there and stop.
start. All right, now we wanna update the text, all right? So let's get rid of this because we know it works now. And this is gonna be tooltip. All right, and let's just see what that looks like. This is this guy. All right. And we're gonna to go tool tip node. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're not gonna remove the class, but we're actually gonna change out the text. So to do that, I'm gonna use the inner HTML and I'm gonna say, if we are in stream mode, we're gonna say, stop streaming. Otherwise, we're gonna say start streaming. All right, let's see if that works now. So refresh the thing, hit start streaming. Now it says stop streaming. And that's it. All right, using pure JES stimulus. So reasonably simple, not super simple, but we're manipulating the DOM directly, all right? So now we can see here we hit start and stop. All right, so that's achieving what we wanna do here. We wanna show and hide these things, all right? And that's our stream mode. Excellent, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm also gonna just grab our Kanban. I'm gonna get rid of this guy because we don't need that anymore. All right, so now showing our header, start streaming, disappears. And that's it. All right, hope you enjoyed that one. I learned a lot. Hopefully you did too. Catch you on the next one.